Hi all, I am Mrs. Vanneman. I'm the freshman and sophomore counselor at Claremore High School. We have started our enrollment process for the next school year and had our first ZAP enrollment meeting this past Wednesday, January 20th. For those of you who were unable to attend that meeting, I'm going to go over the information that was presented by your ZAP advisors. So, uh, welcome to ZAP. As I said, our first meeting was this past Wednesday, January 20th. Our next meeting will be Wednesday, February 10th, and our third meeting will be Wednesday, March 3rd. Our enrollment conferences will be Thursday, March 25th from 4 to 8 p.m., and we'll talk a little bit more about that later in the PowerPoint. Um, ZAP stands for Zebra Advisory Program. All of our students at the high school are assigned to an advisory group with a teacher who is their advisor. It is our goal for you to stay in the same group with the same advisor the whole time you're at the high school. Um, doesn't always work that way because sometimes we have teachers who leave and we have to make adjustments, but it is our goal to always keep you in the same group with the same advisor your whole four years. Um, ZAP is designed to assist students throughout their high school career in successfully meeting graduation requirements and help plan for life after high school through individual academic career planning, otherwise known as ICAP. Um, ICAP is a legislative mandate through House Bill 2155. And we do a lot of those activities through ZAP. ZAP groups meet about once a month. In the beginning of the school year, when you meet in your ZAP groups, you do um, those ICAP things. We do some interest inventories, some goal setting, kind of get you thinking about what you want to do after high school and making some plans um, for how you're going to get there. After Christmas, when you start meeting in your ZAP groups, you start picking your classes for the next year year. So you start going through the enrollment process like we're doing right now, which is why we keep you in the same group with the same advisor. That advisor kind of gets to know you. They know uh, what you want to do after high school. They see your grades and your transcripts so they can help in selecting your classes each year. Some information about the high school. <coughs> we are on what's called a block schedule at the high school. So instead of the six or seven classes that you're in all year long here at the junior high, um, at the high school, you will only be in four classes. Each class is about an hour and a half long. And what that does is it puts a whole year's worth of instruction into a semester. So it's more like a college type schedule where you take four classes in the fall and four different classes in the spring. The exception to that for freshmen is Algebra 1. So if you are taking Algebra 1 as a ninth grader, that class is, um, you'll take that class all year long. It's divided up into a beginning algebra and an intermediate algebra. So you take beginning in the fall, intermediate in the spring. We kind of slow that one down a little bit because it's the foundational math for all the other math classes that you're going to take. Um, each semester is made up of two blocks. Each block is nine weeks long. At the end of each nine weeks, a grade goes on your transcript. So it is super important that you stay caught up with your work. Most kids really like block scheduling because there's not as much to keep up with, but the biggest adjustment is how much quicker the classes move. If you really think about it, you're essentially doing two days of instruction every day in class in order to fit that class into a semester instead of all year long. So it is very easy to get very behind in nine weeks time if you're not keeping up. Um, and at the high school, starting in ninth grade, your grades all go on your transcript. And so they will stay there throughout. And that's what you will give when you start applying for colleges and for scholarships and things like that. So it is super important that you keep up with your work, um, keep up with your grades. If you don't pass a class, you don't get credit for it, and you have to have credits to graduate. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute as well. Over at the high school, we have what's called Encore. Encore is a 40 minute time period between first and second hour. Primarily, it is used for you to get help with homework. You have to go to one of your four classes during that time. So that's the time if you need help with homework, if you need to make something up or retake a test, um, Encore is the time to go get that taken care of. 
If you're not doing well in a class, if you have a D or an F, a teacher may assign you Encore. So they may tell you, you have to go to Encore um, on a certain day if you're not doing well. Encore is also the time that we use to do ZAP. So once a month, like I said, during Encore, you will um, meet with your ZAP groups. We also use Encore time for any assemblies or things like that so that we're not taking out time, um, instruction, classroom instruction time. That is typically the time when the clubs and organizational meetings also happen. This next slide is our grading policy, um, A through F, pretty standard stuff, uh, percentages and equivalent grade point averages that go along with those, with those percentages. We do offer honors and pre-AP classes at the high school. You don't have to take those if you don't want to, but they are an option and they're strongly encouraged if you feel like you can. Um, those classes are a little bit harder. They are, um, you have a little bit more work in them. You're kind of expected to do a little more learning on your own in those classes. But the payoff is that the GPA is weighted heavier in those classes. So an on-level class, an A is a 4.0, in an honors or pre-AP class, it is a 4.5. Starting your sophomore year, you can take some AP classes. Um, and with the AP classes, the grade point average is a whole point differential. So an AP class, an A is a 5.0. With the AP classes, you also have the option of taking the AP exam at the end of the school year. If you score high enough on the AP exam, depending on where you go to college, some colleges will take those for college credit. This next slide here is our promotion policy. So it tells you at each grade level how many credits you have to have earned and what classes you have to have passed in order to move on to the next grade. You must earn a passing grade in each class in order to earn credit for that class. If you receive an F, you earn zero credit for that class. You have to have at least four credits by the end of ninth grade. Two of the four credits have to be from graduation requirements. Um, that don't include electives. And one of those two credits has to be made up of either your English or your history class. Um, you have to have 28 credits in order to graduate, but you have the opportunity for 32 credits the whole time you're at the high school, ninth through 12th grade. So you have ample opportunity um, to earn those credits. But again, if you don't pass a class, you don't earn any credit. And for the core classes, if you don't pass those classes, you have to retake them. Again, 28 credits are required to graduate, but you have the opportunity to earn eight credits during the regular school year for a total of 32 credits by the time you graduate. You have to receive instruction in personal financial literacy. Most students will receive that through their economics class that's required their senior year. CPR training is also a graduation requirement and an opportunity for that will be given during your junior year. Um, we talked a little bit about ICAP previously, beginning with the class of 2023. Students must meet yearly ICAP requirements. Um, many of these are met through your ZAP group, through school-wide things that we do, and for classes that you will take your junior and senior year. Your graduation plan will steer your yearly enrollment towards your graduation requirements. And we're going to talk about graduation plans here in just a second. Um, you can change your plan upon request. But if you want to do a standard grad plan, we need a parent signature. There are two different college prep graduation plans. One of them is a world language option. One of them is a computer technology option. In both options, the credit requirements for your core classes are the same. So you have to have the same number of credits in English, math, social studies, science. The difference is in the world language option, you have to take one and two of a foreign language. Right now at the high school, we offer German and Spanish. Um, we have offered French previously. We are not currently offering that. I don't know if we'll offer it next year or not. Um, or you have to take at least two computer classes at some point before you graduate. We will pick one upon your enrollment at the high school that will be listed um, in your information on the computer. You can change your mind at any time. It's not set in stone. 
And just because you pick one doesn't mean you can't take classes in the other. So if you pick world language as your graduation plan, it doesn't mean you can't take computer classes or vice versa. It's just what's required for graduation. There's also the standard graduation plan. Um, like I said, we have to have a parent signature in order to put you on a standard grad plan. And if you are on Oklahoma Promise, if you're registered for Oklahoma Promise, the standard grad plan does not meet those requirements. The difference between the college prep and the standard grad, um, college prep is a little more rigorous. Your math credits are a little bit different on a standard grad plan. And instead of the two computer classes or two um, world language, you have to take one fine art and one computer class. Oklahoma Promise, there is some information in your ZAP folder regarding this. Um, you have to be registered by the end of your sophomore year in order to qualify. You can go to okpromise.org um, in order to register. There is an income requirement, so your family can't make more than $55,000 per year um, is the requirement right now. You only have to meet that requirement at the time of registration. This information is our valedictorian and salutatorian candidate policy. If you've had older siblings that have come through the high school, um, you'll wanna pay attention to this because this, this information is a little bit different. We've changed the policy a little bit. Last year's graduating class was the last class that still was on the old policy. Um, this year's graduating class is on this new policy. So the biggest change is that we now have valedictorians and salutatorians. So only the top four in the class will be considered valedictorians. Everybody else um, who meets the requirements will be consider considered a salutatorian. We've added an ACT um, score requirement. So your ACT score has to be 26 or greater. And we've increased the um, honors and AP credits just a little bit. There's a check sheet in, in your ZAP information. Um, and if you weren't at the meeting, your ZAP advisor will be posting all of those forms in your Google Classroom for ZAP. So you can look for them there. This is just a little check sheet for you to keep up with your classes and make sure that you are staying on course if you have a goal of being a valedictorian or salutatorian when you graduate. And we strongly encourage, if that's what you want to do, that you start taking those honors and pre-AP classes as a freshman so that you're not scrambling your junior and senior year to try to fit them all in. This um, is regarding NCAA requirements for any of you who think you might wanna play sports in college. This information is also posted in on the website in our course description book. Um, the, the new one is not posted right now, but it will be shortly. It, um, and as I said, this information is in there. Basically, the, the requirements follow our, pretty much our graduation requirements, but NCAA also wants to see that you didn't stop at the minimum requirements, that you continued taking some additional higher level courses beyond just what was required for graduation. The conference scheduling um, for your enrollment, enrollment conferences will be March 25th from 4 to 8 p.m. at the high school. A parent must be present to complete your high school enroll enrollment. At that time, you'll meet with your ZAP advisor face-to-face um, -face and go over the classes that you have selected during um, this enrollment period that we're having the meetings during the day. Um, and you and your parent will both sign off on those. Conference times are being scheduled through the My Conference Time website and our first come first served. Um, the website is myconferencetime.com backslash Claremore High School. The enrollments for the, the conference scheduling for ZAP is not um, posted yet. Right now, if you go to My Conference Time, it is the parent teacher conference um, conferences that are up. So the ZAP enrollment ones will be posted, I believe, starting February 8th. They will open up. Um, your parents will be getting a parent letter that kind of explains the whole process to them also and has this information in it and says when those enrollment conferences um, open up. 
So as soon as they open up, I would encourage your parents to go on there and go ahead and schedule your zap time. As I said, they're first come, first serve. Um, you'll click on your zap advisor's name and complete the information for the time slot that your parent would like. Click on sign up for your conference. Um, and as I said, a letter will be mailed home later this week with these instructions. If you have not already downloaded the Claremore Public Schools app, I strongly encourage you to do that. There's a link to the course description book there, and there will be a link to the My Conference Time scheduling um, for the high school. All of our announcements and information that you need to know are always posted on that app as well. So our next ZAP meeting, as I stated, will be February 10th. Um, during that time, we will select core classes for next year. So we'll talk about the core classes that you're going to take next year. And then on March 3rd, we will um, pick your electives. All Nobody took anything home today. Everything stayed in the ZAP folder. Everything will get sent home after the last meeting, March 3rd. If you are interested in coming to the meeting, if you are able to and interested in coming to the next ZAP meeting, we strongly encourage you to come up to, um, we had this one at the junior high, I'm not sure if the next one will be at the junior high or the high school, but that information will go out and you can contact uh, Maddie Kenyon at the junior high for more information about being able to come up there and times and all of that information if you want to attend the meeting in person. If you don't attend in person, I will do something similar to what I'm doing right now and we will post a, a video in your Google Classroom and on the website that kind of goes over all the information that was gone over. So if you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to. Feel free to reach out to me at the high school. Uh, my number is 918-923-4211. My extension is 3009. Or um, to Ms. Kenyon or Ms. Warren at the junior high, and they can help answer any of your questions as well. And we will see you next time.